Today's webcast will be focusing on medians. It's a continuation of our first webcast on advanced corridor modeling. Today we're going to be diving in to some of the basic median subassemblies. Um, median depressed, median raised with crown, and median raised constant slope. There's several other median subassemblies, um, but they're all based off of these three. Uh, they may include shoulders or barriers uh, along with it. I want to point out that there's a, a marked point in each one of these images and marked points are crucial when it comes to modeling medians in your corridors. Um, marked points are used to tie uh, the median from one side of the road to the other. So when you insert a median subassembly into your assembly, it's going to graphically appear the same way um, in every single drawing and in every single assembly. But it needs this marked point right here as its target. So when a median subassembly is inserted and it's set to a marked point, it will stretch uh, left and right and up and down to always tie to this. The back of curb is usually a pretty good spot um, for that marked point. And I'll point this out later on in the demo, but the marked point must be processed first. So see here. In my assembly properties, the marked point is in a group that comes before the median group. And that's important because if the median become, comes before the marked point, your corridor isn't going to model right. The marked point must be processed first, and then the median can tie uh, to it. So the steps that I'm going to be using today are going to illustrate and show you how you can create a, um, a dynamic uh, median inside of your corridor. We can't do that in just one step though. So we're actually going to utilize two corridors um, and two surfaces. The first step we're going to do is we're going to create a, uh, a corridor that models just the basic lane slopes, 2% up, 2% down, um, whatever your, the scenario may be. We're going to create a surface from that basic corridor. And then I have alignments created on both the left and the right side of all my medians. I'm going to take those alignments and sample this basic corridor surface to get profiles. And what that's going to give me now is profiles that, that are dynamic so as the center line profile adjusts up and down it's going to change the corridor, the corridor is going to get updated, the surface is going to get updated, and then the profiles that I sampled from that surface will be updated. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie my second corridor, um, use these alignments and these profiles as targets so that my median is, is always tied together. So it looks uh, like some extra steps and might be a little confusing, but it'll make sense here in just a bit. So this is the final product that we're going to be accomplishing. And you'll see here I got the, the center line is uh, here on the right side of the road and then as I come up here the center line is on the the left side of the road uh, I have the full bull nose modeled all the way around you'll see here I have a uh, a crown in my median and then over here I have just constant slope and here's just a generic cross section I cut from uh, one of the stations so with that let's jump into a uh, a demo inside Simple 3D Okay, so this is the project we're going to be uh, working in today. Uh, it's a street that has about seven medians in it and median breaks. We will be working in just this section uh, within the closed polygon here. It's right in the center of the road. It has two medians and median breaks. And I'm going to show you how to model a uh, corridor to deal with the breaks, the median and the breaks, um, and the turn lanes, the left turn lanes, crossing the center line. So some challenging aspects to this road. The setup that I have uh, ahead of time, I have, of course, the center line alignment of the road. I have a finished ground and existing profile that are associated with that center line alignment. I also have alignments here on the uh, east side for the lipid gutter and the west side. I also have alignments on each half of the median. So 
east half and west half. Then on each median I also have polylines that wrap around halfway. And now there's no profiles associated with either the alignments at the lipid gutter or at the median. These are simply for width targets later on. Um, the median alignments um, have to be alignments and not pie lines because eventually I'm going to cut a profile um, along those alignments. So that's that's all the setup that I have. So let me get in here and show you how to model this corridor. We'll start with creating an assembly and I'll just call this my basic assembly because this is going to be the assembly use for that initial corridor design to just establish the lane slopes. Bring up my properties palette and my tool palette. And we're going to be working off this lane from tapered median 1. Um, tapered median 1 and tapered median 2 are going to be the keys to uh, modeling medians, uh, especially with the turn lanes crossing the center line. So if I go to help here, I'll show you that this subassembly can account for three different scenarios or cases. Case number one, no median. So that will be, of course, at the median breaks where um, the lanes just come up and meet the center line uh, alignment and center line profile. Median two, uh, where I start to have, or excuse me, case two, where I start to have a median, uh, the lane needs to get more narrow. And then case three, where the turn lane comes in and the lane actually needs to extend beyond the center line, which in this case is the attachment point, needs to extend on past that, but continue a positive slope of 2% in my case, all the way up to the median edge. And here it is in, in plan view. So case one, no median. Case two is where the median starts. And then case three starts right where the left turn lane crosses the center line road. Now, tapered median 2 allows you to have a grade break at the uh, attachment point or for this, here's the attachment point for the inside lane width. So if you needed to have a separate slope for the inside lane or turn lane, you would use uh, median 2. But in my case, I'm going to be using uh, lane from tapered median 1. So I'll come in here and I'll add one on the left side, oh, right side, and then left side. Now it doesn't matter what the default width is. I'm going to use uh, the lipid gutter alignment on the east side to control this in and out. I'm going to use the lipid gutter on the west side to control this point moving in and out. Um, then when I get into the medians, I'll use the poly lines to control where this inside lane extends to. So let's go ahead and get started. Create a corridor using my domain drive as the center line alignment. Use its profile and use this, this basic assembly. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the start and end station to work within our closed polygon area. I'm going to adjust the frequency. something pretty small because I want a nice accurate surface because remember I'll be cutting profiles from this later on so I want to make sure that I have um, a really accurate model. Coming here for the target so lane width alignment on the right this will be my right lipid gutter or east. Lane width alignment this is again on the left side so I'll go with the left lipid gutter. The median edge, I'm going to use the, uh, the half poly lines that I had showed you earlier. So I'm going to change this to feature lines, survey figures, and poly lines. Select from drawing. This is on my right side, so I'll choose this poly line right here on the right side and this poly line right here on the right side. Notice that these poly lines are well offset inside of these alignments. So this base, basic corridor 
it's going to model all the way past this alignment, which means that I'm going to have a surface that extends all the way past that. So later on, I'll be able to cut a profile along these alignments. Okay. So I got those two polylines set. I'll come in here and I'll do the same thing for the left side. Okay, okay, and okay. Close on those pallets, get some more room. So here's our initial basic corridor with just setting the lane slopes. So if I come in here and I take a look at a cross section, adjust my scale. Okay, so this is obviously case one where we have no median. And I can step it forward and then you'll see where it starts breaking the median. And in each case we have our 2% slope up and down. So modeling just like we want it to. Now in some cases you'll see that our feature lines are crossing the road. Here where it should be connecting straight forward it crosses the line here. So this is a pretty easy fix. All we need to do is come in here to our corridor properties, go to our feature lines tab, and instead of branching inward, we're going to branch outward for our feature lines. And there you see the feature lines are now cleaned up. They don't cross the road anymore. Okay. So now I'm just going to create a simple surface from this corridor using the top links. So I change the name, come back in here, call it basic top, and add the top link in, and add in the corridor extents as the boundary. So now I have my surface for my basic lane slopes, which will now allow me to cut profiles along each of these alignments. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Choose each one of my medians. And cut a profile from that surface. And that'll make sense in just a bit. So this corridor and the surface, I don't need to see anymore. Um, I just used it just to get the um, that surface built. So I can come in here and I can freeze the corridor and that surface. Now we can concentrate on the finished corridor assemblies. And they're going to look extremely similar, at least the first one, to this one. So I'm just going to copy it down. I'm going to call this no median. And with no median, I'm going to have just a basic curve and gutter on both sides. And a simple daylight. On both sides. So you see sometimes, or in my case, I missed which point I wanted to place that on. You don't need to delete it. You can simply 
pick on the subassembly, right click, and go to move to and move it to the point on the assembly that you want it. Okay, so that's our no median that's going to be used uh, in the median breaks. I'll copy this down and I'm going to call this one median. So this one is where we'll actually have uh, medians. Now, in order to get our medians to follow these alignments uh, and profiles that we just created, I need to create uh, assembly offsets for that curb to follow. So I'm going to come in here, right click, and add an offset. And this is an important feature or an important step. I'm going to add the right side first. Now, graphically, it doesn't matter, but I'm going to come in here and name this right. I'll come in here, add another one. rename this one and call it left. Now you can't move up the groups these assembly offsets so I needed to add the right one first because this is the one that is gonna have the marked point on it. It'll have a curb assembly and then a marked point attached to it and had I done the left one first it would have been first in this creation in the construction tab and then the right one and the corridor won't model correctly with the median so whichever side is going to have the median just make sure that that's the first one you create um, and add the marked point to whichever assembly offset you add to first so that'll make sense in just a bit I can come in here copy this curb to that offset copy this curb to this offset change their slopes from a negative 2 to a positive 2 go. Now I get into the uh, marked point. Come over here to the generic tool palette and you'll see marked point down here. So when I pick on that it needs a point name and I'm just going to call it target. I'm going to add it to the top back of curb. There we go. And I'll come in here and add in my median constant slope. And it's looking for a marked point. Right now it's set to none. I'll just type in target. Add it to this top back of curve. So now, as this assembly offset travels in and out, following the alignment and up and down following the profile, this median will always tie to this point right here. Now if I go back into the assembly properties, you'll see that now the marked point is above the median. So that's why, again, whichever assembly offset you add in first, that's the one that you need to add the, the marked point to. All right. Now we're ready to uh, model our corridor again. This time it's the finished one. Come in here, corridor, create a corridor domain drive, finish ground, and I'll do the no median. In this case it really doesn't matter which one you use. I'll start with no median. Again I'll adjust the start and end station. Frequency
I'll adjust this and then I'll set the targets for the lane width on the right side just like before I'm going to use the right lip of gutter on the left I use the left lip of gutter set all my targets for my surface since this is no median obviously we're not going to have any median edges now I can come in here and split this region I'm going to split it at all the median noses there we go so now it goes no median next one we're going to actually use a median back to no median back to median okay. the median assemblies have two offsets one on the right one on the left so they each need their own alignment and their own profile so for the first one right that is going to be median 4 right and it's going to follow the median 4 basic top surface profile on the left we'll go median 4 left and median 4 top surface profile the next median break is median 5 right median 5 left and their associated profiles. Okay. So on this one right here, the first median opening will go into its target. You'll see that the ones that we set before the split are already there. I'll just come in here and set the median edges. So on the right, we'll use median for right. This time we're using alignments, not polylines. And for the other one, we'll use median for left. Do the same thing on the second median opening. For the median width, we'll go here to median five right. And median 5 left. And we'll let that model. Okay, so I believe that layer is frozen. I didn't change the name of that basic corridor in the beginning, so both corridors are on the same layer now. So I'll just come in here in this basic corridor one, I'll just hide that object. So we're left with our original one, or our new one. It's got the same feature lines crossing over. So I can just come over here, corridor properties, have the branching look outward. There we go, cleans that up. Over here, and we can make a surface. go so let's take a look I 
like a section here. Change my scale again. And there you go. You got your curves, daylight, lane running up at 2%, curb, median, constant slope, and then it comes back down 2% all the way up to your daylight. And then walk down the station. See as it's getting wider. Go. And then this is obviously case three, we're extending well past the center line, and that 2% slope is still maintained all the way up. Now this point is higher, and we're sloping back down. Okay. So one other possibility instead of having a constant slope would be a, a crown inside the median. So let me show you how we can accomplish that. I'm going to copy this assembly down. I'm just going to name this median with crown. Bring back my tool palettes. And instead of using just the constant slope, I'm going to use median raised with crown. Here's your slopes here that you can set. I'll just say, set that to negative five, maybe. Um, set my mark point to look for target. Set it right there. So now it's going to go up and down. And I'll just come in here and I'll break this corridor. Parameters, this is the second one. I'm going to split this region. I'll split it uh, somewhere right about in here. Okay, so the first one, I'll change it from median to median with crown. I'll reset these targets right here. And I'm just going to double check these targets. While I'm here, that looks good. Looks good. And now you can see from the contours already that I have a meeting with crown. So if I jump in here, let me close down these pallets again. View a cross section. Now instead of having the constant slope, we have a crown up and down our median. And finally, if I spin this up into 3D, should look similar to the uh, image I showed you in the PowerPoint at the beginning, where we had the full nose modeled all the way down the median. and our crown here, of course, in the front.
So that concludes today's webcast on modeling medians.